Welcome back to the shop and for the final episode of the gearbox shaft here. It's been a lot of fun making this and I've had a lot of enjoyment filming the work that I've done on this shaft and showing it on YouTube there for the for you guys to watch. And we're down to the we're down to the last stop and it's it's a pretty simple op. If you watched my last video, I mentioned that this is something that you could just do by hand. So down here where the uh, thrust bearing is actually going to be sitting on the shaft, right in here there's a hole that's drilled and tapped for a simple grease zerk. And that's that guy right there, just a little grease fitting that's going to screw in. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to drill and tap that and it'll be ready to go. So we're going to come down here to the do-all mill. We're going to do it there. i got a couple new things that I can share with you. So let's go get started. So this is the setup that we're going to use and this is a trick that I've used many times to hang shafts off of milling machines. This little trick right here works good for axles also. If you got an axle that you got to drill some holes in or anything shaped like that, you know. So our shaft that we work on looks kind of like an axle. It's got the flange. These right here are some very old parallels that were made by J.C. Bush Company out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I believe these are, are pretty old, but they're excellent quality, just like some of the the Brown and Sharp and the Taft Pierce brand parallels. They're uh, they're hardened in ground. These are one by two by twelve, and they offer plenty of rigidity for hanging something off, even even if you're applying pressure down. You know, you have very little flex on these, especially when you're up here really close to the to the table. So. You just kind of spread them as you need to put your shaft in there and then use a stud and a, a strap clamp and a nut and hold the back end down and it works well for that. So I've already got these kind of set where I want them and we're going to go grab the shaft and we'll set it in there and then we're going to use a couple of the can't twist clamps to clamp them on there and, uh, and hold the shaft on. And as far as the placement of where this drilled hole is going to be, it is actually, let me see here, it's in line. It's kind of in line with one of the half inch keys that I milled on the, the outer end down there. So what I'm doing, I'm just looking at this and we've got our 5 eighths key over here. All right, then I got my half inch keys down there. So I'm just kind of, I'm visually planing this parallel with the uh, the, the mill machine because it's not critical on where it is like I said it's just a grease fitting but I want it to kind of look like the original so we got my keys you can see the bottom key down there and the 5 8 key there I right, got it pretty well centered up on the parallels there as well. And I found that even like whenever I was doing some axles in the past that just C-clamping it to these parallels is, is enough holding power to do to do some drilling. That should be good enough right there so we're gonna have to we need to scribe us a line here on where we want our grease fitting and then we're gonna find the center of it also and then just move over to line up with the line there all right got some of these calipers right here this is a style that's got the bent leg on one side so you can kind of trace a, an OD or an ID or something like that and and scribe a line and I've got them set just uh, just a visual set on these with it touching the OD and looking like it's pretty well in the center of that hole based off of a, a uh, say like a bolt circle. Scratched a couple lines there and hopefully you can see it. it looks like it's right about in the middle of that hole so 
We're going to use this to transfer that measurement over to our new shaft. Put a little ink there so we can see it. Let's see if I'm in the right spot. Yeah, looks like we are. That'll work right there. It's not a perfect line because it depends on where you hold it. You really got to hold these things square because if you pivot one way or the other, you change your direction. But that's that puts us in the ballpark right there. Here's where the beauty of the deterrent style knee mill is. You can go ahead and rotate this head around the way you want. And that's why we're setting it up over here. So I always try to bring the shaft in close to the table as I can and also kind of keep it away from the knee and the castings right here so that you've got a little bit of movement, especially if you were trying to do a bolt circle, you know. you got to move it out and give yourself enough room. So we'll also bring the, the Y-axis in quite a ways. That way we're not having to bring the turret out so far. So that's probably good enough right about there. And I need to go ahead and loosen these two bolts here. Looking for my wrench. I already got the other, the other side loosened. And mine, most of these have the same hex nut right there to loosen up the gib, but mine just has these T-handles on it like that. So we'll go ahead and rotate it around and crank her out some. It, it's helpful to have a, a pointer or something in there to line up, but I'm, I can visually reference it here. All right, we need to go over just a little more. And that will give me room to actually move the table down this way just a little bit. And we need to go out just a touch. Alright, I think that will be good right there. So don't forget, tighten up all of your, your nuts over here. I have made that mistake before. <laughs> you go to start milling something and that thing's just going to take off, man. Got those snug. Okay. All right. Now we'll go ahead and we'll we'll find our center of the hole there. I put my center point in there just to try to locate the the middle. I just did give myself enough room right there. I forgot I had to go to the mill right there for indicating, but we got her. All right. That's just kind of eyeball close. So I'm going to go ahead and use the, the shank mount indicator arm right here and sweep that thing in. All right. So we got the, the edge technology. It's the shank mount indicator holder. And I'm using a, this is an interrapid test indicator that I have. And it, like the brown and sharp, only reads half a thousandths, but it's a really nice indicator, and I don't really get to use it much, so I figured I'd pull it out. So I've got it mounted on the the dovetail, the top part of the the, uh, the dovetail on the top of the indicator there, and this arm has some uh, friction joints there, so you just kind of move it around as you need to. This way here really isn't that critical. I won't side to side, but you might as well just center it up while you're at it. 
just makes it a little easier to follow. about even on the sides there now. That ain't too bad right there. Pretty well centered up. So now that we've found the center of the shaft, we'll just run it out here and just line up our, our line and we'll be ready to go. Looks like I got two little lines next to each other so I'm just going to try to fall right in the middle. I think that'll work. Alright, we need to find us a tap and a tap wrench. We're going to be tapping quarter 28. Let's see. Oh, no, oh, wrong drawer. All right, this is some of the older taps right here. I want, I want some of the sets. There we go. There's some set. Oh, here we go. Quarter 28. There's a full set of them in there. Some good old green fields. We'll pull that out and use it. And I think we'll use this tap wrench right here. A nice stair. This is actually one that I got at Moultrie last year. There was a couple of them, these two guys right here. And we'll use this one. All right. I'm just going to use this little stubby drill to spot it. Get the table locked. This is a little set that I had picked up a while back. I think it was a yard sale item. I don't remember how much I paid for it. It's a number drill set. We're going to use a number three drill. Just verify it. Yep, that's a number three. That says Continental Twist Drills, Chicago, Illinois. It's a little fast for my taste. Remember we're cutting some 4140 right there. Put a little go juice there. AVE loves that. I do need to chamfer it. I'll do that before I take the, the um, that chuck out of it. Put a little chamfer, and then I'm gonna set up a half-inch collet, and we'll use this tap guide made by Fisher. That's just the spring-loaded center if you if you don't know what this is. And some people call it a tap follower, top, a tap guide, or a spring-loaded center. And it keeps the tap wrench straight and square on the top end there. You just have to every now and then push it back in there a little further. I think that's going to be plenty right there. The, uh, the grease fitting only has like a, a few threads on it. All right. 
I hadn't even turned the air on today. Let me get the grease fitting to see if it screws in there. All right, it should. I believe that's a five sixteenth. Let me go. Let me go find something. There it is. D-U-N, done. Just need a little clean up. Get rid of that blue ink. And we have, a, have us a completed shaft now. Well, guys, we've reached the end of the line for this project right here. This gearbox shaft for the, for the well drilling outfit. And I got to say that I'm happy with the results. It turned out... I believe that this shaft actually turned out better than what I was thinking that it was going to turn out. Maybe it's because y'all been watching me. <laughs> Maybe it's because I got the camera on that I took a little extra precaution trying to make sure things were right with this. But it turned out great and I, I read some comments not long ago that it's a shame to have to hand this thing over. And I agree with you guys. I really wish that I could just keep this, keep it right here in the shop as a nice memento to our video series that we've done on this but it's to be used and that's what it's going to do i'll probably coat this thing down with some uh, rust inhibitor to keep it from rusting and contact my customer and let him know that this thing is ready and and let him come and pick it up at his convenience but i want to tell you guys that i really appreciate everybody's involvement how you've been with this project and, and how you've been with the channel really but it's been great hearing from everybody and I did have a lot of fun with this particular series doing this doing this machine work on this shaft and showing you everything that I did I really enjoyed it and I, I enjoyed communicating with everybody and and everybody that chipped in and and tried to be a part of it you know in their own way with their comments and suggestions and and all that so Thank you very much for continuing to support me. And it's always kind of bittersweet coming to the end of these projects that I do on the channel here because it's the, it's the end of the line. But I have some other things in store for you. I've even got some jobs over here that I've, that's been kind of been pushed to the side that I need to get on. So we're gonna start working on some other stuff around here. And there'll be some more projects coming up we got i got some ideas for some other things and some and some stuff that i've already mentioned that we're going to do so we'll we'll get back onto some machining and and keep this keep this thing going so that is it i'm going to set this thing up and try to get a couple fresh pictures for you but here's just one last shot on video of the shaft i think it turned out great so again, thanks everybody. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you real soon, okay?